The tactical FPS genre is one that prides itself on realism. Realistic graphics, mechanics, tone, and story. Everything about this genre is about conveying what it's like to actually be in these scenarios. That any misstep, wrong turn, or lapse in judgment could result in your swift and oftentimes unceremonious demise. Realism is the ultimate goal. Yet, what many may forget is that the closer to reality you come, the more scrutiny you open yourself up to. One such game that faced rather crazed mass scrutiny is Atomic Games' lost tactical shooter, Six Days in Fallujah. In November of 2004, during the Iraq War, began a highly controversial conflict known as the Second Battle of Fallujah. This battle was a six-week-long offensive comprised of a coalition of the United States, the Iraq Interim Government, and the United Kingdom. This conflict would later be described as the heaviest urban combat U.S. military have been involved in since the Battle of Hue City in Vietnam in 1968. The whole battle basically consisted of coalition forces clearing houses across the city. The Second Battle of Fallujah resulted in a total of 107 coalition forces being killed, 613 wounded, and a rough estimate of over 2,000 Iraqi insurgents being killed and 1,500 being captured. It was reported that, in the aftermath, over 5,000 high-explosive artillery rounds were fired with over 320 precision bombs, 390 rockets, and over 90,000 machine gun and cannon rounds being fired. The city of Fallujah was decimated. Fallujah, once known as the City of Mosques, had over 200 mosques prior to the conflict. However, during the conflict, many of these mosques were used as strongholds and weapon cache sites by the insurgents. During the conflict, 60 mosques were destroyed, and of the roughly 50,000 buildings in Fallujah, nearly 10,000 were believed to be destroyed, with half the remaining buildings suffering extensive damages. As the dust settled on the conflict, those back home in the states began to highly criticize this operation. For starters, during the battle, white phosphorus was used to combat the insurgents. In case you don't know, white phosphorus Phosphorus can, quote, create a screen of fire that cannot be extinguished with water. The U.S. would deny its use of this highly controversial weapon until multiple unnamed soldiers present during the conflict were quoted as saying, We used it for screening missions at two breaches and later in the fight as a potential psychological weapon against the insurgents in trench lines and spider holes where we could not get effect on them with high explosives. We fired shake and bake missions at the insurgents using white phosphorus to flush them out and high explosives to take them. Other controversies surrounding this conflict consisted of the prevention of military-aged males from fleeing Fallujah, extremely high amounts of civilian casualties, and the usage of depleted uranium shells, which resulted in an increase in infant mortality, cancer, and birth defects among those born in Fallujah. To say this conflict was controversial would be an understatement. The Second Battle of Fallujah was highly complex and highly dangerous, with really no one winning in the end. However, in the years to come, the controversy of this conflict would once again rear its head as it shifted to a new medium. In the early 2000s, video game studio Atomic Games was tasked with developing a military simulation program for the U.S. Marine Corps with assistance from actual Marines serving as technical advisors. However, as the Iraq War began, most of their advisors were deployed in Iraq and participated in the Second Battle of Fallujah. Returning from this conflict, those same advisors suggested Atomic Games make their game based on said conflict. Atomic Games president Peter Tampt stated, When they came back from Fallujah, they asked us to create a video game about their experiences there, and it seemed like the right thing to do. From the beginning, the goal of this game would be to simulate the conflict in the most realistic way possible. This game was to be the most realistic military shooter on the market. Tampt would also state, ultimately, all of us were curious about what it would really be like to be at war. I've been playing military shooters for ages, and at a certain point when I'm playing the game, I know it's fake. You can tell a bunch of guys sat in a room and designed it. That's always bothered me. He would continue by saying, There are things that you can do in a video game that you cannot do in other forms of media. And a lot of that has to do with presenting players with the dilemma that the Marines saw in Fallujah, and then giving them the choice of how to handle that dilemma. Beginning development around 2005, Atomic Games interviewed U.S. Marines, Iraqi civilians, Iraqi insurgents, war historians, and senior military officials in order to truly uncover the complexities of the battle. Atomic Games would later describe their game as a non-traditional survival horror game where the fear doesn't come from monsters, but from the ruthlessness of the combatants. 
Game director Juan Benito would state, many of the insurgents had no intention of leaving the city alive, so their entire mission might be to lie in wait with a gun trained at a doorway, for days just waiting for a Marine to pop his head in. In most modern military shooters, the tendency is to turn the volume up to 11 and keep it there. Our game turns it up to 12 at times, but we dial it back down too, so we can establish a cadence. In terms of gameplay, Six Days in Fallujah would be a third-person tactical shooter, with producer James Cowgill stating, The example we used quite a bit was, you're a squad leader, and you're clearing the left side of the street down Fallujah. You have three options. You can turn around and clear that house, kick down the door and do what you need to. The second option is to leave it for the squad behind you to clear, so that they can take the risk. The third option is to call in an airstrike. Of those three bad options, which do you choose? It was also stated that Six Days in Fallujah would feature destructible environments that would surpass the Battlefield series, a feat that was only achievable after the studio developed an entirely new game engine to accomplish this goal. Using satellite imagery, Six Days in Fallujah would also feature a meticulously recreated version of the actual city of Fallujah, as well as real marines lending their names and likenesses in order to recreate specific events during the battle. In fact, after every mission, real footage of interviews with the vets who served during this conflict would play, with the hopes of giving the player a better understanding of the conflict as a whole. Officially announced in 2009, Six Days in Fallujah would garner praise from the public and even landing a publishing contract with Konami, the publisher behind games like Metal Gear, Silent Hill, and Castlevania. With a solid premise, solid developers, and solid publisher, everything was looking up for Six Days in Fallujah. Almost immediately after its announcement, controversy began to arise. Critics from veterans to civilians to anti-war foundations were very vocal about the game being too close to the real conflict. For reference, Six Days in Fallujah was slated to be released in 2010 just six years after the actual conflict. These critics also stated that the game lacked the ability to respectfully handle the subject matter and that, because it's a video game, it lacked the ability to detail important context and would trivialize the real event. Peter Tampt would respond to the criticism by stating, As we've watched the dialogue that's taken place about the game, there's definitely one point that we want people to understand about the game, and that is, it is not about the politics of whether the US should have been there or not. It's really about the stories of the Marines who are in Fallujah. We are focused now on what actually happened on the ground. James Calgill would state, Everybody had some form of Call of Duty in their head of just a run-and-gun shooter. Nothing but fun. The storytelling and documentary aspects were completely lost in the messaging. And Juan Benito stated, It felt like a siege. We knew what was happening in the studio. We knew the validity of the content we were making and the vision around it. I was convinced, and I think the team was as well. We weren't able to articulate that to the outside world in a way that we wanted to. It all felt like a big, unjust misunderstanding. Regardless, only three weeks after agreeing to publish Six Days in Fallujah, Konami would pull out of their contract with Atomic Games with no explanation as to why. It was only later revealed it was due to the pressure being placed on them by the public outcry and the fear of publishing a controversial game. After being unable to land another publisher, a wave of layoffs struck Atomic Games, and by 2011, Atomic Games filed for bankruptcy and the studio shut down. Despite this, Peter Tampt was still adamant that the game would be released as planned and this was merely a setback. However, as time moved on, everyone seemed to forget about this once highly controversial game and it faded into obscurity. Until it didn't. Despite going radio silent for almost two decades, Six Days in Fallujah received a second chance. In 2021, Peter Tamp's company Victura announced it would revive Six Days in Fallujah and would work alongside Highwire Games to do so. This new team consisted of many veterans from the industry, many of whom previously worked on the original Halo and Destiny games. This new version of Six Days in Fallujah essentially took every concept they were working with initially and made it all the better. Changing drastically, this new and improved Six Days in Fallujah was changed into a first-person tactical military shooter, and to accurately simulate the uncertainty and danger of urban combat, the studio developed procedural architecture technology that would randomly assemble the buildings and city blocks each time the game was played, creating that true, non-traditional survival horror game they wanted to make in the very beginning. Again, realism was emphasized more than ever as the team once again interviewed those who participated in the battle, which included over 100 soldiers and Iraqi civilians 
civilians, each sharing their stories so that the team could make an accurate recreation of the conflict. And just like it was originally conceived, Six Days in Fallujah would feature documentary segments that discuss the events as well as the political decisions that led to the battle as well as the aftermath. While the controversy surrounding this game was not as severe as it was before, comments about its American-centric focus led to some forms of criticism. However, it was announced that over time, the team plans to add multiple perspectives from other coalition forces and Iraqi civilians. The team also stated in a newsletter that, despite committing to realism, we do not allow players to use white phosphorus as a weapon during gameplay. Its use is described during the documentary segments. Their end goal with Six Days in Fallujah was to allow players to participate in these war stories while being given context through documentary snippets. The team wants the player to, quote, solve real military and civilian scenarios from the battle interactively, offering a perspective into urban warfare not possible through any other media. Finally, after being in development hell since the early 2000s, in June of 2023, Six Days in Fallujah released through Steam's Early Access program. While the game is slated for a full release in 2024, at the time of this video, it is currently still in Early Access. However, the reviews have been extremely positive, with many praising the game for its realism, horror aspects, and dedication to immersion. A game, once riddled with controversy, has seemingly done the impossible. Being developed during a time when games faced mass scrutiny, Six Days in Fallujah persevered. Through hard work and the drive to see a vision come true, Six Days in Fallujah finally delivered on its promise. They created one of the most realistic milsim experiences on the market. While the game is still in development, the future looks incredibly bright for this title.